Before we start visualizing our concept in the sketch or get into any further details, I would like to discuss a few things, especially for those who are absolutely new to this and just to ease your mind into this and have a better idea and mindset about the entire course we are going to discuss about. So animation is an illusion. To be specific, it's an illusion of movement, often referred as persistence of vision, also referred as persistence of impression. Now some of you might have seen this illusion of Jesus, okay? Now if you stare at this image for a couple of seconds and then after that if you look at the blank wall, then you will see, you will still see this image inverted, okay? So th that is basically the whole idea about this. In simple words, when we look at an object, the ray of light that proceeds from it enters eye and the impression of it lasts for some time even after the object is removed. So when we draw the same object in different states, in different frames and play in rapid succession, the viewer interprets them as continuous moving image. Now this was a simple arrow that I have drawn over here and you can see how different frames, even though very roughly drawn, but when I play them in the rapid succession, they give you an illusion of animation okay i can detail it out further but that's uh, not the purpose right now right now i've drawn only a simple object okay and dealing with the motion of this it's rather simple but it gets complex when there is more context to it now what if i make this illusion bigger and some greater experience let's let's draw a giant and and i need to make an animation of it which is not just in motion but a performance maybe there is a story behind it so in this case uh, there is there are a lot of parallel details that I need to take care of it will have a story the character will have a certain personality the weapon that he is holding and whatever he is surrounded with will add into making this illusion greater it will be more believable and uh, there will be secondary characters maybe so when creating a bigger picture in animation you will have to take care of a lot of things so now we are dealing with multiple things here. It's not just motion of one object. There are multiple things branching out and connecting back and a lot can go wrong and break the illusion if it is not well thought of. So there is a lot to process here. It would be difficult to work on this as a whole and not make mistakes and uh, things can go wrong in a uh, in complex process. So, so what do we do to deal with a bigger complex process? We break it down. We break it down to smaller elements. Now just like uh, how everything on earth is made of combination of different elements and even though they are so complex, there is still so much common in the life forms that we see around us. And to study anything, it's important to understand what it is made of and each of those elements. It doesn't matter how big it is, it can always be broken down to its finest element. Similarly, every creative creation has a lot in common when it's broken down to different elements that make it whole. Once you have identified these elements, you can you get more control over the process. It becomes easy to understand and organize and manage. We are not talking about any specialization here. I'm sure some of you will become a really good animators. Some of you will be really great at visualizing storyboards. Some will make great character designs or models. And some might use this medium to make their own short stories and animations. But each of these areas are very important and need dedicated effort. But what's more important when dealing with all this, if I put it in very simple ways, there are three things. One is organizing thought process, being resourceful and understanding the illusion. Organizing the thought process. Our brain gets thoughts in very rapid succession. You will have one thought and few more will chain out of it and it will keep on building on your thoughts. So when working with constraints, it's important to identify and freeze these thoughts to reach a conclusion. Now let's talk about what this process is. I will put these in very simple words here. So there is always an inspiration point. Something inspires us and we have an idea. The inspiration can come from anything, real life experiences, events, images that we have seen, just an abstract or anything. Once we have an idea, the idea is needs to align with the purpose. There is always a purpose behind every idea. So let's say if, you, if I'm making an ad film, then the idea, whatever I have, needs to deliver whatever the message that ad film needs to convey. Without the purpose, there is no use of any idea. And uh, once we have an idea, 
after that we need a device to translate that idea in in the context of animation and movie we use scripting and then we create a mock up of the idea so just like how game designers create mock up of the levels at very early stage and the product designers create physical mock ups of their designs to uh, to make some critical decisions about the functionality and uh, the overall design similarly in movie making and animated film design you can create storyboards and animatic to visualize your entire sequences before the actual production begins and uh, this is a very crucial stage at, at this moment you will be basically at this moment you can make really important decisions and the entire production depends on it after that a right medium is chosen to fulfill the need of the design this stage can actually run parallel to the previous stage but basically what happens over here is uh, all the major calls related to the medium the art style uh, whether it needs to be a simplified animation or uh, what kind of mood you need to choose for this movie all those uh, design related calls are taken and uh, whatever suits the need of the design that will be decided over here and after that the production begins and then production is divided into task and sub task and all these run parallel now the complexity of the production depends on the scale of of the animation or the the project you are working on if you talk about a feature length film then there might be hundreds or at least thousand people working on it and there will be plenty more sub task and the, each of the task will be divided into smaller smaller things to perfect them because uh, a movie of a billion dollar budget have a lot more details and uh, it's a lot to handle process will look and the process is much complex as compared to when we are making a 10 second or 30 second ad commercial film so even though the process will be on the bigger scale or there will be a lot of detail in it but the overall structure and the flow of it will always remain the same then we have research now research is not uh, i mean it doesn't fall over here it basically backs every phase of the production and the design so some might say that the research is more useful in the early stage where we are designing and uh, taking calls on the pre production but i would say the research is for uh, all the phases whether you are designing a character whether it's about the technology you are using uh, research about the tools you are going to use research about methods that are needed to animate the scene so research will always back everything up over here so it will always run parallel to every task in the final stage the everything comes together all the things that are done in multiple stages will start coming together and everything will be combined and once it's all combined then after that everything is just about polishing and mastering it and making it perfect okay So keep in mind this process is not exclusive to only animation film design. If I draw some parallel over here, it's very common in all creative platforms. Second thing is being resourceful. In early days in animation, it's easy to get overwhelmed by seeing so much effort going on in one simple animation. But keep in mind without greater resources none of that will be possible. All the big budget movies that you see are made possible by using technologies with greater power. tools that are used to produce these animations are very specialized and customized to the need of the design creativity and tools will always run parallel and push each other technology will always catch up to the need of the design and these new tools also enable artists to think and create with more freedom at early days of your journey you might be modeling your 3d models from scratch and an idea of creating a vast experience with thousands of elements will sound quite impossible to you but that's only because you are not aware of the resources specialized tools can help you create forest and mountains with few clicks behavior of crowd of thousands of animated humans can be made believable by setting up just a few rules you will get to simulate natural phenomena without having to worry about the physics so these tools are available and so being aware of these resources is part of the journey where to find the right material to study where to find the right right source of inspiration doing the right research finding right tool for your production reusability being more efficient finding the right technique all that is part of this journey the more aware you become of resources that are available the more powerful you will feel and the freedom that you will get will fuel your creativity understanding the illusion as we were discussing earlier animation is illusion So whatever you see on the screen however logical it may seem but it is faked with just an illusion technique. So the more you study about these the better are chances of you coming up with your own techniques. For example, we often see fast moving characters against blurred lines 
gives us illusion of speed. Things moving in different directions or pace create an illusion of parallax and the compositions you see on the screen are often just a few matte paintings but planned with high precision keeping in mind the camera and the layout of the scene. Once you start thinking about all this you will have much effective solution for all the animated scenes you have planned. Now this journey is not going to be a month long or a year long. It will go on and you will keep on improving and keep becoming better every day. So a few good practices can help you make this journey fruitful. Number one, I'll say make a habit of putting your thoughts into sketch. You don't have to become an expert in sketching. Pencil and paper are easiest media you will have access to for recording your thoughts into visual. For just a moment, grab a pencil and paper and step away from computer. Don't worry about mastering it, but just draw whatever comes to your mind for a moment. Make a habit of drawing a few sketches every day, scribbling your thoughts into the diary and this practice will help you quickly ideate, combine and iterate your thoughts into visual. Number 2. Observation Well, you need to feed your mind with knowledge and observation. There is no greater resource than studying and observing the real world around you. Try to observe the behavior of everything. You will have magical tools to make thousands of trees and mountains and human crowds within few clicks. But you need to have great observation to put together all that information within a natural composition and make it look believable. So the more observant you are, the much deeper understanding you will have about each of the subject and that detail will later reflect in your work. Number 3. Practice on small scale Keep in mind all those animated movies you've seen are made by a team of thousands of people and as exciting the idea of making your own short film may sound, it's easier for new artists to get lost in the process and get carried away with ambitious thoughts. So try to make your early 3D content as simple as possible until you are comfortable enough to take on the bigger idea. Number 4. Finish what you've started It's important to finish what you've started because at early stage the results don't really matter. What matters is learning from the mistakes and mastering the process and rest everything else is relative to time, budget and more practice. Now here are a few motivational thoughts just to boost you up for the rest of the journey. Whatever you learn here today or anywhere else in the process, even if it doesn't reflect in your creation immediately, that learning is still there within you and have made you a better artist. And at some point of time, it will reflect in your thoughts in the future. The 40% rule The 40% rule is simple. When your mind is telling you that you're done, that you're exhausted, that you can't possibly go further, you're only actually done 40%. So push harder. Number 3. If you find all of this too much and find it difficult, then think of how they used to measure the movement of the planets in the ancient times. Now greater mindset is very important to begin with this journey. So stay organized, be consistent. Now let's work towards sketching our idea in the next chapter. I'll see you guys there.